everybody and welcome to another episode of the motherland experience it's your girl Nye here and today we are all about healthcare. i have a very amazing guest for you guys today so sit back relax and let's go inside guys I am sitting here with an amazing brother and we're gonna discuss all about healthcare here in Ghana as well as his journey here to the motherland so please help me welcome Tyrone hey Tyrone hello thanks for having me I appreciate uh, you coming uh, here to interview the clinic oh uh, thank you so much for having us it is truly an honor so please can you tell us where you're from yes um, I'm originally from Columbus Ohio Mm, I spent okay. a long time also in Maryland working, mm -hmm. uh, Gaithersburg to be, well, pretty much all over Maryland, but mm -hmm. um, I did some travel nursing in Maryland, also in Texas and uh, California okay. as well. Mm, so you were like going a little bit across the state. Yes. yes. And stay put, it's in mm. one spot. <laughs> right. So how long have you been here in Ghana? Uh, since 2019, actually. 2019. So I've, been, I've been here for quite some time. I took a break. Mm -hmm. uh, back when COVID hit in 2020, mm -hmm. uh, went back to the States for about a year. Okay. Uh, worked on a COVID task force in, a, in the U.S. for a while. Came right back. So. Uh, you couldn't leave Ghana, huh? No, I couldn't leave it's for like too long. It's like the motherland was just calling you back, <laughs> exactly. huh? Exactly. Uh, well, I have to say, why Ghana out of all the countries here? Well, What led you to Ghana? <laughs> I've been to a few countries in Africa, but uh, for Ghana, it felt the most, it, it was the most warmest when I came in, partly due to the year return, obviously. Right, exactly. But um, as well as I have some family here. So my brother is married to a Ghanaian. So Ooh, okay. um, I've been coming back and forth, traveling, visiting mm -hmm. their family. Um, and that's what kind of make me feel uh, grounded here is because I had mm -hmm. connections here mm -hmm. and uh, I've, ha I've had people that I can you know, reach out to when I need that. Right, kind of like, like a support system, exactly. right? Exactly. And that's important when you go to another country. Mm -hmm. you got to have that support system. So what other African countries did you visit? Well, I've been to Kenya. Uh, obviously, being here in Ghana, I've also <laughs> went to Burkina Faso, to uh, mm -hmm. Togo, to uh, also to Ivory Coast. Okay. Um, you know, those are all close. Here, right, so. exactly. Uh, also went to South Africa, um, mm. Rwanda. Mm -hmm. So those are some places I've visited. Oh, so you've been doing a little bit of traveling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. So Ghana was like your favorite one where you're like, I can see be being home here, yes. I guess you would say. Yeah, I feel like Ghana is one of the places, one of the places I would say in Africa that is a softer landing place. Right. Because of uh, the diaspora population being so big here. Mm -hmm. It's so. like, it's almost like this is like the Atlanta of Africa, right, as right. she would say, like all like a lot of people, black people from the diaspora are coming here. Yes. And I find that quite interesting. Mm -hmm. I really do. I find that very, very interesting. So was it a culture shock coming here or how did you, how was your transition? Um, I, it definitely was an adjustment. I don't think <laughs> I was shocked by it, but it was definitely an adjustment. Right. Uh, I feel like um, one of the biggest things is that we as from the diaspora coming from the United States, mm -hmm. sometimes we feel like, you know, this is home and right. uh, as soon as I come down, I'm going to be good. But you still have to really make your connections and you have to adjust. And uh, so just like every other country, there's going to be some adjustments and some right. things that you have to get used to culturally. Exactly. You know? Exactly. That's, I would say, probably the biggest being of being from the diaspora here is just adjustment right. because it is very vast it's doable but the mm -hmm. the cultures are extremely vast so segueing into that we're sitting here in your beautiful clinic and so what was what started your passion into healthcare? were you kind of like just one day you picked up a stethoscope and was like <laughs> you know what that's gonna be me <laughs> yeah well well, not to give my age away, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually became a nurse at, I believe, 19, actually. That was when I became a wow. nurse. Uh, so I, I went through uh, high school. I took college mm -hmm. credits and I actually graduated with my nursing degree at 19. 
Wow. Uh, so I started in nursing. Um, from there, I went into administration and business. Mm -hmm. um, so I segued from travel nursing for years and then mm -hmm. into the administration field. And then I found myself as a CEO at what, 29 actually <laughs> at, wow. in Ohio uh, for a hormonal replacement clinic there, mm -hmm. uh, which I had been working for. So um, due to some I should say some nuances in business where I have to, you know, there's non-competes and things. So right, exactly. I became ambitious. I want to start my own businesses, but I okay. could not start hormonal replacement mm -hmm. in uh, in the United States with uh, the non-compete that I had signed. So Got my you. brother and I decided to come here mm -hmm. and uh, dabble in it, you know, in, in Ghana. Mm, okay, okay. So that was the reason why you started in Ghana, like you started your practice here in mm -hmm. Ghana. Yes. Okay, got you, got you. Well, how is it having a business here, a medical business or clinic here in Ghana, being from the diaspora? Um, the It is a big difference. Uh, one of the biggest differences I noticed was that um, here in Ghana, obviously healthcare is not a priority like it is in the yeah. United States. And part of that is due to uh, corporate corporate law and things you know mm -hmm. in the united states from school to having a job at a corporation you have to have physical checks and um you see more advertisement for uh health mm -hmm. here um we are still in ghana we're still progressing and we're still trying to make exactly. health care a normal uh everyday you know occurrence so uh, i found that in business your greatest marketing tool is education here that's true. So we have mm -hmm. to do a lot of outreaches and uh, educating people on hormones and different things that mm -hmm. they may necessarily not necessarily hear, mm -hmm. you know, on a regular basis. So that's helped us a lot. Mm, awesome. Awesome. Well, I love the name American Rejuvenation Clinic, but correct me if I'm wrong. Was it the, a male clinic yes. at first? Okay. Yes. So what happened? So the first uh, we wanted to specifically target men for the first two years of operation, and that was due to Ghana having one of the highest uh, levels of prostate cancer in like all of Africa. Oh, so wow. I uh, we decided to target men and screen men for prostate cancer because as we know, this is not just an, uh, an African thing. Yes. It's, I, I would say it's a black thing. <laughs> oh, it's, it's just a black thing in <laughs> where, general. Okay. Where men, <laughs> we feel like, you know, we don't go to the hospital until something is dramatically wrong. Right. You know, wrong. Where we're almost broke down and then exactly. we're like, okay, yeah, it was like, me... okay, then I'll go. You know what's so interesting right. about that? My grandfather died of prostate cancer and it was because of that. He mm -hmm. put it off and put it off until right. it really came down on him. I have an uh, uncle that passed from that as well. Yeah. So uh, it's just something that we have to do better as men of, of mm -hmm. really, I feel like women do a good job of of once something is wrong, they're like, <laughs> let me check so? this out. I think you guys do Ladies, a better job than us. <laughs> 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 yeah, with us, we, we neglect our health quite you know, mm. frequently. Well, they say prevention is better than a cure. Right. You know? So we went from, uh, we did that for two years and actually it was pretty effective. We, we found oh. quite a few people who had, who did, you know, who had prostate cancer and wow. we treated and, and removed, you know, different, you know, uh, mm. ailments from people. But um, then we decided to segment into just general health care. So mm -hmm. now we treat women, men, children, you know. Yeah, it's the whole it's gamut. Like, right. So <laughs> we're a gamut. general preventative uh, medicine. Uh, so whole, we're trying to get into the holistic, you know, healthcare. Oh, so. that's so needed. Right. It really is. That's so needed. Kind of getting back to what was here, you know, what's put, God put it on earth for us, right. you know, and kind of getting back to the old remedies and the old ways. I think mm -hmm. that's, that's really important. So Tyrone, can you go over the various different services that the American Rejuvenation Clinic offers? Yeah, so any, basically uh, we have a full um, clinic. So uh, from lab work, we can do lab work. Um, obviously if, if someone needs vac vaccinations for work, mm -hmm. Uh, we have specialists and also general doctors. So uh, okay. we have a urologist um, and we also have a, a gynecologist as well. Okay. Um, so any, you know, okay. any general health care concerns, we can address all of those. Uh, we also have, um, we have some connections with other major facilities that have, you know, that, mm -hmm. that perform surgeries and things. Mm -hmm. So um, 
pretty much we're able to handle any any need that you would have. <laughs> so you're kind of like a one-stop shop. Yes, yes. So would you say if somebody really was sick, you know, where they needed like immediate care and well, attention, could you do that or no? No, actually we, we, we're we pretty much an uh, outpatient, uh, outpatient clinic. So like we don't, we don't admit people. We do have, obviously mm -hmm. we do have beds in case of an emergency mm -hmm, uh, right. to hold you until we get you to the, you know, proper facility. Mm -hmm. But uh, we do not admit people here, mm -hmm. you know. Um, okay. So that's where our partners come in, where we would send those patients to a facility that would house them. Okay, got you, got you. So is it rewarding practicing medicine here in Ghana? I would say yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, it's so, there is so, it's so many, uh, especially on our outreaches, there's mm -hmm. so many people who have health, um, health issues and they yeah. can't afford it sometimes right. to treat symptoms. Uh, or um, they may not even have the money to go get screening, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it, to me, it's very rewarding to be able to go out and uh, to help treat those and actually give information and education yeah. on healthcare. Yeah, I bet it is. I bet it is. Kind of, that's leading me to another question. What would you say? Because some. The um, Ghanaians who, brothers and sisters who get, acquire their medical degrees, but they choose to go abroad because of the mm -hmm. pay, you know, they want to make the extra coins and the extra money and get, you know, get paid what they're worth. Right. What would you say to them? Your brother here from the diaspora mm -hmm. and you making it happen. So what would you say to brothers and sisters that come from Ghana who leave and practice medicine abroad? What would you say to them? Uh, I'll be honest because I, I understand the frustration. I mm -hmm. know that the the pay yeah. is far greater elsewhere sometimes. Yeah. But what is. I would what I would encourage them to do is is to explore your options, and mm -hmm. also I feel like a lot of times we we tend to look at things in an individual mindset. Right. So mm -hmm. we feel like oh I can't afford to open up a clinic of my own or but mm -hmm. we can partner together. We can you know. How about we start thinking of things in a different way where yeah. other physicians that graduate from school come together and lighten the load so exactly. that you can open up a clinic together. Mm -hmm. We don't always have to do everything ourselves. Right. And, and so separate. You right. know what I mean? You know. And in fact, there's not many corporations that you will find that are successful that there's one person mm -hmm. that is, you know, manning the burden of the whole company. So even the, this clinic, are, you know, there's three Mm -hmm. owners here so and okay. we also have some outside support as well so i didn't do it by myself mm -hmm. um so i feel like people should have that mindset of trying to partner and collaborate with others I we're agree. always weak in some you know one area so bring right. somebody bring in somebody to, else up you know and kind of um, do it for the collective do it for to help each other have a more of a collective mindset mm -hmm. instead of a separative mindset right that's really important that's really important so what would you what would you like to see in terms of healthcare in ghana the future of healthcare in ghana what would you like to see in the upcoming years i would like to see some more diversity um, so I would like to see some more specialized clinics um, mm -hmm. that treat, you know, different ailments. Mm -hmm. I would also like to see, um, I would also see, like to see more collaboration as well yeah. with facilities instead of competing against each other, mm -hmm. come together to, right. you know, fund outreaches and events, mm -hmm. uh, health seminars, these things. I would like to see more of that. Yeah, because there's no need for competition. Yeah, you know, right. there's no need for competition. Let's just work together, mm -hmm. have that mindset to work together. So, you guys may not know this about Mr. Tyrone, but he is not only in the medical field, but he also is a clothing designer. So <laughs> could you please share with us why, you know, how you started getting into clothing designing? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I have a clothing line called uh, Fafua. Uh, which is Swahili for to wake up or to rise to rise up. Ooh, I like um, that. <laughs> so uh, basically, it all started just as a hobby. Mm -hmm. So um, I have friends and family that come back and forth, and uh, I go back and forth. Mm -hmm. So you know, me wearing African uh, uh, fabrics and uh, making jackets and mm -hmm. <laughs> all types of things with African prints and indigenous fabrics such as mud cloth and indigo and kente. Mm. People started to see it and 
order from, you know, can you get this for me or right. can you make one for me? So I ended up deciding to turn it into a business. And, <laughs> Ooh, okay. and uh, so far, you know, we're new. We're just starting, but mm -hmm. uh, it's doing well and it's picking up. Mm, OK, so what do you design for men, women, children? The whole Everyone. So everyone. <laughs> yeah, everyone's included. <laughs> yeah, we've done I mean, we've done we've done all types of different um, different outfits and mm -hmm. different uh, different prints and designs. Pretty much like you can go on our Instagram, mm -hmm. which is uh, for full collections mm -hmm. uh, on Instagram. And we have a pretty big catalog. We've done a lot. Okay, wonderful. So guys, you heard that. He can not only help you sew up your joints, but he can also help you sew up your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, I like that. So um, so if anybody would like to get in touch with you, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, well, I'm on um, Instagram at call, Instagram and uh, Facebook at call Tyrone Jamar. Okay. Uh, and so they can, people can reach out to me on Instagram, Facebook. I'm also on LinkedIn. Uh, Tyrone Jamar. So you can reach out to me on those platforms. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Tyrone, for coming on the channel. It was truly an honor. It really, really was. And also, you know, definitely um, to our viewers, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and please share this information with others. Until next time, bye.